Hello, my name is Father John Olenek, and I'm the Provincial Vicar for the Baltimore Province speaking to you from our Provincial House in Washington, D.C. on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. I will confess to you something that I bet every single pastor would agree with, and that is that Christmas falling on a Monday is just the worst. There's a lot that must happen in a very short amount of time. If you're like me, in just a few hours, you're going to be right back here in church. Only it's not going to be Advent any longer. The wreath with its candles will be gone, as well as the purple altar cloth. In its place will be the manger scene and lots of beautiful poinsettias. Instead of singing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, we'll be singing Silent Night. It's like liturgical whiplash to switch gears so dramatically in the span of one day. If you ever watched a NASCAR race, you know that when the drivers make a pit stop, how quickly that pit crew works. I've actually had the opportunity to be in pit row in Charlotte at the Motor Speedway for a race. And besides being incredibly loud, the swiftness with which the race team works to swap out the tires and pump in the gas is truly amazing. I've read that Taylor Swift has 16 costume changes during her concert. Now that's a lot of quick change. I don't think I would be very comfortable with that and I'm sure I'm not alone. Dramatic and quick changes are hard. We resist having our day-to-day -day routines mess with. It's much more comfortable to know what's coming ahead 
than to be blindsided by news that throws us for a loop. And this is exactly what we find in our familiar gospel for today from St. Luke. It's the story of the Annunciation. And you know, we've heard it so many times that I think we become numb to how enormous this event was for Mary and really for the whole of humanity. In the span of just a few moments, Mary went from being a simple teenage Jewish girl to being the mother of the Messiah, the Son of God. Talk about quick changes. While it's true that this turning of her life upside down was quick, the truth is our Blessed Mother had been preparing for it her entire life even if she wasn't entirely aware. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. We remembered how God had prepared Mary from the very moment of her conception to be without original sin so that she would be a fitting vessel for the one who comes to save us all. Her parents instructed her in the faith. She learned her prayers. She went to the synagogue like all good Jews. Just like our Blessed Mother, we too have made this week's long journey of Advent, mindful of our desire for the coming of the Lord among us. It's true, this quick change from Advent to Christmas can be a little unsettling but it's not coming as a surprise. Just as Mary had been prepared to say yes to the Archangel Gabriel, so we also have spiritually prepared our hearts to welcome our Savior. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this video homily. Please join us again on Christmas Day for a reflection from our provincial, Father John Collins. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.